tech layoffs seem to not be stopping, there's a record number of students graduating with computer science degrees saturating the market, and AI is just able to write code for us. So is it too late to learn how to code in 2023? Whether you want to call it a recession or an economic pullback or whatever you want to say, the tech industry has clearly been hurting over the last year or so, and there's not a whole lot of signs yet of it actually improving. And if you look at the tech industry over the last few years, or really the last decade, it became this game of raise a bunch of money so that you can grow a company and take that company you've grown. And by the way, I don't mean profit by grow. I mean, just get a bunch of users in some way. So you grow a company and then you take that growth and you go to investors and say, look, I have all this growth, invest in me. And then the investors see the growth. So they give you more money. You use that money to find more users, to grow even more. And you use that growth to raise more money. And you just keep going through this cycle. And eventually as a founder, you grow enough to where you can get the business acquired by somebody who's willing to take the risk that maybe, just maybe, they might be able to turn this growth machine into a profit machine. But also this entire system doesn't work once venture capital money starts drying up. And as the economy slows down, that naturally is what's going to happen. So as a result of attempting to become more profitable, these startups have to start doing some layoffs to get rid of all of the excess employees that they don't necessarily need and that we're working sort of on these growth strategies rather than the base profit strategy core business models. But we also see this at the biggest, most profitable companies. During COVID especially, many of these companies just hired and hired and hired in this idea that everything's going remote, everything's going to keep growing and we need tons of employees to fuel all this growth. But again, when the economy slows down a little bit, that growth is less sustainable and lots of layoffs end up happening. This also isn't the first time we've seen something like this. In the 90s, there was the dot-com bubble, which essentially was a bunch of companies that raised a ton of money based on the fact that they had dot-com in their name and nothing to do with their actual business models. This isn't that much different than companies raising a bunch of money because they say they do something with blockchain or artificial intelligence or machine learning. Fundamentally, some of these modern companies might have better business models, but a lot of them honestly don't. And even if it's not a great comparison, and I don't claim to be an economist by any means, so maybe it's a terrible comparison, tell me in the comments, I guess. But I do think we can learn two major things from this comparison, even if it's not a great comparison. The first is the fact that the tech industry recovered. It's much larger than it was in the 90s. And second is the fact that the market has matured in a healthy way since then. While we still have companies saying, hey, we have blockchain, give us lots of money. For the most part, most tech companies aren't that. Most tech companies at least have some level of legitimate business model behind them. And I think Silicon Valley and venture capital has gotten much smarter than it was back then. So I guess my point is simply that I would look at the 90s bubble burst as almost like a worst case scenario for what could happen to tech today, because I think we're in a much healthier place than we were back then. Maybe some economists can flame me in the comments for that one, but that's the way I currently at least am looking at it. And I think one of the key indicators of this is the big tech companies. Because if you look at the big tech companies, did they overhire during COVID? Absolutely. But are they still massive, profitable businesses? Also, absolutely. If you look at companies like Google, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, these massive, massive tech companies that have a huge control over the market, they are ridiculously profitable. And there's not a whole lot that could change that. To give some indication of this, I think we could all say that Meta probably handled this worse than any other tech company. They have had a terrible year. But guess what? In the last quarter, while everybody's talking about what a horrible year they had, and they did by their standards, they had a net income of $10 billion in the last three months. This is not a dying company. It might be a company that's growth is slowing, or that's even in a decline, but it's not dying. It's not going anywhere. And that's the same for most of these big tech companies. So overall, my point with the recession thing is simply that I can't predict the future, but if I wanted to make a guess, my guess would be that the tech industry will recover eventually, whether that takes six months, a year, five years, 10 years, I don't know. It could get worse before it gets better, but I think eventually it will get better. And when we look at just like the broader tech market, and we see all of these companies that are still thriving, and we see how tech is impacting all of our lives more and more and more, the companies producing that tech are naturally going to continue to grow over time. Okay, but moving on from the recession, I also want to talk about oversaturation in the market a little bit. There's more and more computer science graduates every year, and there's all these pushes to teach every kid how to code, to teach everyone in university how to code, 
to just get more people learning how to code. So as a result of this, there potentially will be far more job applicants for maybe even the same number of jobs in the future. And if the growth of people who know how to code outpaces the growth of jobs and coding, well, then that would presumably bring salaries down. So is this going to be a negative factor towards the software engineering space? Well, maybe. Over the last five to 10 years, computer science has arguably been the best return on investment of any college degree you could get just financially. With just a four-year degree, you can earn $100,000, even $200,000 and up directly out of college, which is completely unheard of for pretty much any other degree. But is the tipping point right now where salaries just start going down year over year? Maybe. I personally don't think so. I think tech is so deeply ingrained in our society and it's being advanced so quickly that I find it hard to believe that the job growth isn't going to continue to accelerate. But maybe it won't, or maybe it just will be outpaced by the growth of computer science graduates. But even if the salaries do go down, I think the worst scenario is that computer science becomes similar to other STEM fields and how much you end up making out of college, which is not bad. It's still a lot of money. It might not be the incredible compensation we've seen over the last five to 10 years, but it's still very, very good compensation. I don't think you would say that a civil engineering degree, for instance, is a worthless degree. They might not make as much money as a computer science graduate, but they still make good money, they can support their families, and they can live a comfortable life. And it's still a good career to have. And I think the same would be true for computer science and software engineering, if in that worst case that it keeps going down. But I, again, don't necessarily think that'll happen. But on the flip side, it's also possible that the growth in artificial intelligence and the blockchain and everything else actually results in more jobs for computer science graduates that results in higher incomes. So there is a chance it could go either way, but I think the overall opinion that I would have is regardless of what happens, computer science graduates are going to be living comfortably from a financial perspective for a very long time. But even if the recession ends and there's not an oversaturation in the market, what about AI tools? Things like ChatGPT that seem to be getting better and better at coding over time and could potentially one day be replacing software engineers. Well, yes, ChatGPT and tools like it are absolutely incredible and they represent such a huge leap forward in technology. But at the same time, they are just tools. And I think for a long time, they will continue to just be tools. Tools that we as software engineers or anybody else really can use to improve their workflows and be better at what they do. It's easy to be amazed by things like how good GPT is at coding interviews, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be that good at software engineering. Solving a coding interview question is coding in a small vacuum, and it's coding in a small vacuum a problem that's already been solved, and that presumably probably was even in the training data. This is very different than coding in a massive code base of potentially millions of files, and creating new and unique things. And even if you try to use GPT for these things now, you'll see it doesn't do nearly as well as it does on these smaller, more isolated tasks in a vacuum. But GPT has been getting better seemingly exponentially, and if that continues, won't it just get better than us at coding? It will get good enough to be able to understand these code bases with millions of files. And potentially this is true, but to be honest, I sort of doubt it. As an example, look at self-driving cars. When self-driving cars were first announced and we saw the first demos, it was absolutely incredible. And it seems like they were getting so much better, so much faster. Now, five, maybe 10 years later, how much better are they now than they were back then? They're a lot better. But guess what? We are still very far away from being able to just hop in a self-driving car, sit in the back seat, take a nap, and it takes you where you need to go. That's not happening anytime soon. And the reason for this is that oftentimes, the first 80% of a problem only takes 20% of the work, whereas the remaining 20% of the problem is 80% of the work. And I would expect that tools like GPT are going to hit similar plateaus as they get better and better. Okay, but what if it just continues to improve exponentially? After all, that seems to be what it's doing so far. Well, even if that happens, I think we're still a very long way away from actual adoption. Again, think about the self-driving car analogy. If self-driving cars were completely finished today, how long would it be before people stopped driving their own cars? Probably a while. There'd be some people who feel unsafe getting in a self-driving car. There'd be some people who just enjoy driving. And there would be some places where there's laws restricting the ability to drive a self-driving car. The same is true with AI replacing jobs. If AI could replace software engineers tomorrow, Google and Facebook and Microsoft and all of these massive companies aren't just going to lay off their workforce and replace them with AI. That would be a massive risk. 
because what happens if it fails? This is similar to the fear of getting in a self-driving car. It might not even be a logical fear, but fundamentally these companies are making billions of dollars. Why would they risk all of that on replacing everybody with AI? The more realistic scenario is that they slowly start adopting it and it makes engineers a little bit more productive and maybe they need a smaller workforce over time and maybe 10, 15, 20 years down the line, that smaller workforce gets so much smaller that it seems like there basically are no software engineers anymore. But there's not going to be a day where Google decides we're just going to lay off all of the software engineers today and replace them with GPT. That's not going to happen. Moreover, if software engineers are being replaced, then presumably many white collar computer desk type jobs are also being replaced. So in that scenario, all of these companies that don't currently hire any software engineers will start using AI to replace some of their other employees. But guess who they're going to need to hire to do the integrations to do that replacement? Well, they would have to hire software engineers who are likely to be the best suited to actually understand how to integrate tools like GPT into the workflows of these companies. Now, maybe we get to the point eventually where it's so user-friendly that you don't need a software engineer at all, but I think that's even further down the line. So ultimately, if you are concerned about this, what I would say is that most likely in the result that software engineers are being replaced, well, we would be in a scenario where most white collar jobs are being replaced. And I think software engineers would be one of the last, if not quite literally the last white collar computer desk type job left. So in this hypothetical scenario, which to be clear, I don't think is a likely scenario, but in this hypothetical sort of the worst case scenario, there would be such a massive rise in unemployment across multiple sectors. And because of that massive increase in unemployment, there would have to be some kind of economic shift to support that. Because if we get to a point where we have 30, 40, 50% unemployment, the economy cannot sustain itself like that. If all of the companies replace all of their employees with AI, well, all of those employees will no longer have any money. That means that there's no customers to buy products from the companies and the companies can't survive either. So something would have to happen in the economy to sustain itself. And I don't think that's going to happen, but my point is simply that there would be an economic shift in some way that supports this. I think this could be universal basic income or it could be something completely different. But the point is simply that I don't think this is something you can prepare for. And I think it's something that in this worst case scenario, doomsday scenario, there would be some major change sort of in how the way society is functioning. And I don't say this to be pessimistic. I say it to point out the absurdity of the hypothetical scenario and how unlikely I think it is to actually happen. But even if it did happen in this horrible doomsday hypothetical scenario, I think we would still be okay and society would find a way to continue on. And if you happen to have gotten a computer science degree or learned to code, you would still be fine. And even if those coding skills you learn become completely useless 20 years in the future, which I don't think they will be, but even if they do, you would still have developed new logical thinking skills and critical thinking skills. Plus coding is fun and you'll probably enjoy it. So is it too late to learn how to code? Absolutely not. Maybe recognize that the jobs you could get could be changing. Maybe the compensation packages will be changing, but overall, I think it's going to stay an amazing field to be in. And more than that, you shouldn't let some AI chatbot dictate what you want to do with your life. Do whatever it is that you're interested in.